Let's see the OData service creation process. Before creating an OData service, first we have to define the service itself. For this, the first step which we need to follow is defining the data model. In the data model definition, we have two stages. The first one is creating a project and second one is creating data model. And for creating data model, we have four different options. One is declarative data model. Second one is importing model via EDMX. That is entity data model in XML file. And the third option is importing model via DDIC. That is data dictionary objects. And the fourth option is importing model via RFC or BOR that is remote function call or business object repository. Out of these four options, we can create data model. Once it is done, then we'll move to the next step that is service registration, where the step class like MPC and DPC gets created. MPC is model provider class and DPC is data provider class. Then we will continue with the next step that is service implementation where we have two different options. The first one is service development and the other one is service generation. And again, in the service generation step, to continue, we have three different options. The first one is RFC BOR generation. The second one is redefinition. And the third one is model composition. Whatever the option that we follow in service implementation step, we move forward to the next and the last step that is service maintenance where registration and activation of OData service takes place and the OData service is published. Thus OData service document is ready for consumption. EDMX is Entity Data Model XML file. Data model means the data model comprises the tables that are involved in the synchronization. The relationship between all of the elements is encapsulated in the data model of the OData service. Data model is a logical relationship between the business objects. Let's take an example. Here we see a business object called business partner, which has an entity, entity set business partner collection and properties and navigation properties. Similarly, if we take Another business object that is sales order which contains entity set sales order collection and its properties and navigation properties. Here the business objects that is a business partner and sales order are considered as entity types. That means these are the basic building blocks which represents the specific business object. 
and the business partner collection sales order collection or the entity sets and at least one property must be defined as a key field for an entity type an entity type is built from one or more properties and the navigation property in an entity type implements an association and the association is nothing but the relationship between two entity types ddic objects or data dictionary objects anything that you can create via sc11 including tables data elements domains search helps lock objects views structures table types etc rfc communication between applications of different systems in the sap environment includes connections between sap systems as well as between sap systems and non sap systems remote function call is a standard sap interface for communication between sap systems the business object repository is a object oriented repository in the system it contains the sap business object types and sap interface types as well as their components such as methods attributes and events in the next video we'll see the service builder thank you